Packs Journey Home, Chapter 9. At high moon, Pax and Bristol set out with the kits for the reservoir. The trip took a long time. The two little dog foxes insisted on stopping to investigate every new thing they encountered. And they encountered many new things. A leather boot, exotically scented. Crunchy milkweed pods that released floating stars when pulled apart. Skunk cabbage, which tasted as bad as it smelled. Startling discoveries at each turn. The smaller one followed a beetle into a tangle of greenbrier. While Pax and Bristle were freeing him from the thorny vines, the larger one skittered off after a skunk waddling by, and Pax had to jump back to snatch him out of danger in time. Only the little vixen gave them no trouble. If she left Pax, it was only to sniff or taste something he showed her. After a quick test of the novelty, she darted back under his chest, where she walked between his paws so that sometimes he tripped over her, slowing them down even more. Whenever he nudged her out to travel beside him, she looked up nervously so often she herself tripped. The world was full of both the pleasures and dangers. Pax knew that he and Bristle must teach their kids everything they would need to know. Yes, look up, he agreed with his daughter, but also look around. He showed her a pale green moth as large as her head, trembling against the papery bark of a birch tree. He showed her a hollow where the blackberries grew so thick that in summer they would stain her coat as she ate, and a field where apples would fall around her while she napped in the autumn sun. There is a bounty wherever you look. Presently, they reached the chain-link fence that surrounded the reservoir, and Pax grew wary. The wire stirred deep memories of being caged, but it was the only reservoir that made him uneasy. Its vastness alone was a mystery. No matter how far along the shore he ran, he could only see water. He had never encountered such a body of water, where there was no shore across and no other body of water he knew was bordered in places by long buildings and waters, so that its surface slapped against concrete, sounding angry. Most confusing, it smelled of nothing. In his year of freedom, Pax had learned that water smelled of the life it traveled past. Rain catch smelled of sky and of the leaves it splashed upon. Rivers smelled of moss and silver flash trapped. Springs smelled of roots, but the water here traveled past no life at all. No fish swam in the depths, no crabs scuttled along the shallows, no clams studded the mud, only dead reeds rimmed the shore. Pax waited for Bristle and the other two kits to catch up, and then they slipped under a bent corner of wire. As they approached the reservoir, Bis Bristle growled in alarm. Pax flattened himself and ordered his family to follow his lead. He edged forward until he had a good view. Far up the shore, beside the buildings, he saw lights. Stay, I will go to see. The little vixen whimpered as he crept out, but he ordered her to stay again and to be silent, and she curled up close to her mother. Pax trotted in a loop, staying downwind. As he neared, he smelled wood smoke and heard wisps of human voices. Unlike Bristle, Pax was not afraid of humans. He had lived with a boy, and he had loved that boy, and he had learned the humans' ways, and their ways had been his ways for most of his life. He'd crept closer to watch this group from a stand of bushes. They were gathered around a fire. Although they were women and youths in the group, they all wore the clothes of the warsick men he remembered from a year before. A truck pulled in, and Pax recognized that also, large and green and smelling of burnt metal and oil. He made his way back to where his family waited. Human warsick has come. Full knowledge passed between Pax and his mate. Where the warsick were... The earth could blow without warning. The air itself could shatter. Foxes could lose legs. Foxes could be killed. Their home at the deserted farm was no longer safe. Bristle looked back at her kits. We must move our family. 
Pax shared this understanding also. Bristle couldn't leave, so he would go out to, to find his family a new home. But not tonight. Tonight, we teach them to drink. Bristle and Pax slipped down to a place on the gravelly shore where it would be safe. They bent to the quiet water and showed the kids how to lap it with their tongues. The kids bounced towards the bank. They batted at the surface of the water and jumped back at its startling liquidity. They pranced in and out. They splashed along the edge. They dunked each other. Bristle and Pax stepped back to watch, Bristle keeping a wary eye on the other side of the reservoir where the humans were. Pax noticed that the kits were changing. Their gray coats were becoming redder each day, and fresh points of white fur dipped their tails and cheeks. Their legs had darkened and lengthened. They were strong enough now to knock each other over. After a few minutes, all three settled down and had learned the new task of drinking. Excited by their accomplishment, thirsty from the long journey, they drank and they drank and they drank.